Hello. Good afternoon. Who am I speaking with? Is this Heather Massaro? Yes, I couldn't hear you on the app for some reason. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Are you the other phone number, LGL445? Uh, I have no idea. Probably, yes. Uh, LG phone do you have two phones connected? No, I tried doing it through the app, and then I called. Maybe I called twice because I put the number in wrong. So I just called again. All right. Well, we'll figure out who the other person is. You're in the right spot. Okay. This is Judge Middleton. I'm here at the court in Centerville. Okay. We're bringing your landlord in. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Walker. Could you unmute your microphone? There we go. There we go. Good afternoon, Mr. Walker. Can you hear me? Yeah, say yeah. Yeah. Heather Massaro, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. This is Judge Middleton. I'm here at the court in Centerville, and this is the afternoon we have set aside for landlord tenant matters. Our first matter is entitled Richard Walker versus Heather Massaro. It's filed 21931LT. Mr. Walker is asking to terminate the tenancy of Ms. Massaro and have her move out. Heather, before we go further, I need to advise you of your rights in a landlord tenant proceeding. As a defendant in a landlord tenant proceeding, including termination of tenancy actions, you have the following legal rights. You may obtain counsel for representation in this matter. If you cannot afford an attorney, a legal aid attorney may be available to help you. You have the right to a trial by a jury or by the court. If the action is for non-payment of rent, which this isn't, you could be eligible for some, for some financial assistance, but this is not a non-payment of rent case. If the plaintiff is agreeable, the citizen mediation service may be available as a possible source of case resolution. If both parties are agreeable to mediation, the court can set that up. If you do reach an agreement with the plaintiff and a consent judgment is entered by the court, you will waive the rights listed above but have the following additional rights. The judgment may not be enforced until three business days have passed. You may move to set aside this judgment within those three days if you misunderstood what you consented to or what you were waiving. Your motion to set aside the judgment will be set for a landlord tenant hearing. However, if the judge does not find in your favor, the original judgment would stand. So let me ask a couple questions. Uh, Mr. Walker, at this point, you're simply asking that Ms. Massaro move. Is that correct? Here. Is that correct? Could you repeat that, sir? Mr. Walker, are you simply asking that Heather Massaro move? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Is there a lease? No. It's nothing to do about money. It's just uh, she had nowhere to go, and I told her she could stay there until I sell the house. And we got a buyer now through a real estate agent, and she agreed to find some place to live. And that's all there is to it. All right. Ms. Massaro, what's your perspective here? Um, I agree with that. I seem to find a place to stay, but um, I've called Keystone and tried everything I could, but I haven't found a place. All right. The law requires I set this for a hearing seven days from today to allow you to attempt to get legal counsel. Uh, okay. the, that's a fairly recent change. So mm -hmm. you get a, essentially a free seven days. Uh, 
That takes us to next. Today's the 21st. We'll set it for next Monday, uh, June 28th at 2.15. Okay. It will be by Zoom like this once again. Now, Mr. Walker, the law requires that I set this second hearing. Heather, there does not appear to be any defense. You're living there. You're apparently not paying any rent. He wants to sell the house and wants you to move. Uh, we do cases like this all the time. You get seven days to attempt to get an attorney. If there's nothing different, when I hear this case next week, I would give you 10 days from next Monday, which would be July 7th, I think, to have you move. So okay. you should continue to try to find a place to live. No lease. Okay. Uh, he just wants to sell the house and have you move. Mm -hmm. Mr. Walker, this goes under the category of no good deed goes unpunished. You let someone move in, then you're ready to sell the house and you can't because they can't find a place to move to. And that's very common, Ms. Massaro. Are you employed? You have Heather? Money back for it. No, I'm not any... employed, but I have money. All right, I have money so put back for it. Okay. All right. One week from today at 2.15, we will revisit this matter. Do either of you have any questions? No, sir. I don't. No, you're All right. All right, I'll see you each next week. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Uh, now I've got two other people who are each just telephone numbers. Let's see if we can figure out who they are. Who am I speaking with? Amy Gonzer. All right. Let me give you a name, Ms. Gonzer. Do you have the ability to do video? Uh, maybe on my phone, but I instead of a phone call. All right. I have my mom set up on a phone call too. All right. All right. All right, so let me see who that is. If you're going to be a plaintiff landlord, you really should figure out how to do this uh, with a video, but we'll struggle the best we can. Let's see who this other well, number is. Honestly, I was going to do a video, but it yes. said on the form to do a phone call, no video. No, it didn't. It was highlighted. You must, you must have misread it. Um, we all We do everything generally if we can by video. I've got another person that's logged in. Who am I speaking with? Sandra Dugrome. Okay, same thing. You don't have video either? No. All right. I'm really sorry. It just, I'm reading it. It says, this is an invite to Zoom meeting. All parties should do one of the following to join the meeting at the time of the call and it's highlighted phone call, no video, and then it gives the number and the member ID. So that's what I thought we had to do. No, if you have only a phone call without the ability to do a video. Um, uh, so um, soon enough, we'll probably be going back to live court. And in the old days, people would just come into court and uh, we would do our business here in the courtroom, but we're struggling. I've done that before. Uh, at any rate, for now, we'll make do. Uh, this matter is not set until 125. 
So Mr. Loser is not here yet. We need to let the clock tick a little bit. Okay. Uh, are you on cell phones? Yes. You should be able to hit the little icon and turn the video on in the corner, but uh, maybe not. I don't have one. I don't think I do either. All right, we'll do the best we can. One fundamental problem is you can't tell who you're talking to. I mean, I could have do, I could have done it. I just thought that's the way they wanted us to do it. All right. Well, you're here now. We'll make do with what we got. We need to wait until 125 to see if Mr. Loser is going to appear. Okay. We do a lot of just waiting for the clock to tick here in Zoom court. I imagine. Now, Ms. DeGroote, you're the actual uh, signer of the lease, is that correct? Correct. This lease was from May 1st of 2020 to May 1st of 2021, so the lease has expired. And uh, in about one minute, I'm going to call the case and we'll address it further. All right, it is 125. I'm going to call the case of Sandra DeGroote, also Amy Gonser versus Rick Lusier. I'm not sure how Amy Gonser is connected, but we'll find that out. Uh, as I indicated, this is file 21945LT. It is a motion to terminate tenancy for a property on 119 Kirby Road. It must be near the and in high school. Um, the rent was $115.50 per month with a $25 pet fee. The lease week. also, per week, excuse me, uh, refers to someone named Gloria. Who's Gloria? Oh, that wasn't supposed to be on there. That was her, that's where we got the lease from. Okay. All right. All right. Well, anyway, is Mr. Loser still there? Yes, he is. How, Amy Gonzer, how are you connected to this? Um, that's my mom. And I took over taking care of it for her. Well, you can't represent her unless you have a law degree. You can't appear in court on behalf of another person unless you're an attorney. So, Sandra. No, I was. I was just helping her with like filing the paperwork and that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, all right. Well, she's here on her own behalf. He is there. He was personally served. Uh, is there an arrearage in the rent? Yes, he hasn't paid any. When did he last pay rent? He never paid rent. He's been there for a Part year. 
Excuse yeah, me? part of our vision is to do um, repairs on the house, which he, you know, then just present me with the receipts, and then I was going to pay him a hourly rate and for all things that he did do the house to take it off of his rent, and he never well, gave that, him any. That generally doesn't work out very well, especially with not this lease. I know who Gloria is. You borrowed this lease from her and just filled in the uh, blanks, which didn't exactly fit the situation. Um, and But it is a termination of tenancy. He was personally served, and he is not here. So he's subject to a default. If he were here, I'd have to give him seven days notice. Um, but he is not here, and uh, there's no judgment here. All right, defendant. He wants to repair property. Have you spoken to him? Not since last October when he called me that he had a hard deck and he was in the hospital. And I said, well, when you get out and our mother told me, I never did. All right. He has 10 days to move. You have to submit a judgment, uh, which uh, will, I'll sign it. Today is the 21st. He has until July 1st to move or he's subject to being evicted. Ms. DeGroat, you're doing this without an attorney, which you're entitled to do. Uh, certainly, but uh, it can be a bit of a struggle for lay people. Um, anyway, he knows about the hearing. He apparently chose not to appear, and he's got 10 days to move or he's subject to being evicted. You need to get to the court either by email or fax or bring it over here, a judgment, uh, or talk to... Uh, Guadalupe at the landlord tenant department and uh, see what you need to do. But I've given you the relief that you asked for. He has 10 days to move or he's subject to being evicted. You have any questions? No. Okay. Uh, that means when that 10 days is up, you need to bring $15 to the courthouse and get a writ of eviction. And then the sheriff forcibly removes them. And uh, that's how that system works. So this was some sort of a lease exchange for services, but it doesn't say that. It says it's 150 50 per week. Um, but at any rate, there's an arrearage. He is here, and he's subject to being evicted. All right, I'll wait for that judgment. When I get it, I'll sign it. Thank you both. Thank you. Well, all right, a bit screwy. Let's see what else we got. Our next matter is 135. Today we had uh, three lay plaintiff termination of tenancies. So the uh, Housing advocate from Keystone isn't here because these aren't non-payment of rent cases. They're all termination of tenancy.
Good afternoon, sir. Could you unmute your mic? Yep. Good afternoon. Are you Brandon Barnett? Yes, sir. Uh, welcome. This is Judge Middleton. We got to let the clock tick a bit. Our hearing isn't set until 1.30, and here is the defendant now, so we should be able to start. Good afternoon. Are you Christine Mock? Yes. All right. This is Judge Middleton. Are you guys in the same house? Yes. All right. We're getting feedback. We'll see if we can make this work. You're close to one another, but let's see if we can make it work. This is file 21861LT. It's entitled Brandon Barnett versus Christine Mock. Miss Mock, the law requires that before we start, I advise you of your rights as a tenant in a landlord tenant proceeding. So I want you to listen carefully and I'm going to tell you what those rights are. As a defendant in a landlord tenant proceeding, including a termination of tenancy, you have the following legal rights. You have the right to obtain counsel for representation in this matter. If you cannot afford an attorney, a legal aid attorney may be available to help you. We sent you that information. You have the right to a trial by a jury or by the court. If the action is for non-payment of rent, you could be eligible for housing assistance, but this is not a non-payment of rent case. If the plaintiff is agreeable, the Citizens Mediation Services, Inc. may be available as a possible source of case resolution. If both parties are agreeable to mediation, call the court to contact us and we'll schedule it. If you do reach an agreement with the plaintiff and a consent judgment is entered by the court, you will waive the rights listed above, but have the following additional rights. The judgment may not be enforced until three business days have passed. You may move to set aside this judgment within those three days if you misunderstood what you consented to or what you were waiving. Your motion to set aside the judgment will be set for a landlord tenant hearing. However, if the judge does not find in your favor, the original judgment will stand. All right, Mr. Barnett, would you unmute your mic? Okay. All right, we get cases like this several times a year. Both parties reside at 401 East Chicago Road. Mr. Barnett, are you the owner of that home? Yes, I am. Is there any lease? No. You've allowed Miss Mock to live there and now you wish that she leaves. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Miss Mock, what's your position here? Um, we've been together in a relationship almost seven years. Okay. And um there's no lease. Apparently the relationship's coming to an end and he wants you to move. Yeah. Uh, as I said, this happens several times a year where relationships like this end. And you did this right, Mr. Barnett. You can't just throw their stuff out the back window or say, you got to get out of my house. If she's been there for seven years, she's a tenant. <clears throat> And she has rights as a tenant, and you have to go through this process. Uh, but Miss Mock, you don't have a lot of rights because you don't have a lease, and he owns the exactly. house, without paying any rent. So I'm assuming you haven't moved because you haven't found any place to move to. Is that exactly. correct? Exactly. Yes. I have three children also. They live there also. Yes, they do. We have one child together, and I have a 13 and a 14-year-old. All right. You have a right to one adjournment of seven days. Um, and so I'm going to continue this matter to June 28 at... 
2.30. If he gets what he requests at that time, you would have 10 days to move or the sheriff would come do the eviction. Put your okay. stuff up the street. Now, this is a very unpleasant process, um, but this happens when the party's relationship ends, they're still in the same place. You don't, your name's not on the property. You're not married and he wants it back. Um, okay. I have to follow the law. So we're gonna resume next week, one week from today, seven days, June 28th at 2.30. Um, and at that time, if you haven't moved, we'll have a hearing and I'll make a ruling. And if I find in his favor, you would have 10 days more, which would be by July 7th. July 7th, I think, is a mm, Wednesday. <laughs> After that, you can ask for a writ of eviction and have the sheriff put your stuff out on the street. So that is certainly unpleasant. All right. Do you have any questions? So I have to be out in 10 days, you said? You have seven days till next week, and then you would have 10 more days from that. So essentially you have 17 days. Uh, okay. All right. You do have the right to contact legal aid or other attorney, but when it comes down to it, it's his house and there's no lease. Um, right. All right. Um, any other questions? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll see you both next uh, Monday at 2.30. Thank you. Thank you. Hope this can be worked out. <clears throat> Mary, is that you? Uh, no, this is Rick Lugier. Oh, uh, I, I'm I've been trying to get into the the Zoom uh, video and it was wasn't allowing me, so I'm trying the the uh, the secondary option. Well, you're about half an hour late. Uh, 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 it said that uh, it says on my paperwork that it's at uh, one thirty, and I've been trying uh, for the last. All right. Let's see. Is it at 125? So we called the case at 125 and waited for you to come in. I order that you have 10 days to move out. Well, here's the thing, sir. Uh, Just a minute. Just a minute. Uh, you're about 15 minutes late, which isn't terrible. But now that we don't do things live anymore, we do them right on time. Um, uh, I can show proof that I just had the internet guy here today fixing the internet, trying to make it to where I can. All right. Well, you didn't. You didn't. So I spent my time doing the hearing with Ms. Gonser and Mr. Grote. You weren't there. So that's very inconvenient. In, in this day and age, you can't just show up when you feel like it. However, I, you I, did show up 15 minutes late. You were confused. You don't have video. So I'm going to continue this to next uh, Monday at 2.35 p.m. Monday, 2.35. I'm, I'm writing it yes. down. Now, what they told me is there's no lease. Well, there is a lease, but the lease doesn't apply. They said you haven't paid any rent. The lease expired May 1st, and they want you to move. And supposedly you were going to do some repair in exchange for rent. They said they haven't spoken to you since last October. The bottom line is the lease has expired, and they want you to move. So even though you're late to the party, I'm going to continue this for seven days, and we'll address this again. At that point, if they get what they asked for, you would have 10 additional days to move out, which would be by July 7th. So my suggestion is you plan to move 
Um, your lease is up. There's a dispute as to what was paid or what wasn't paid, and they want you to move. So, and it's very important you show up on time, not 17 minutes late. I don't have the ability to just have people sit here and hang around while I wait to see when everyone's going to show up or not. So it will be at 2.35, and I would suggest you even log in earlier than that. Do you have any other questions? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, not, not questions, but uh, as far as preparing to move, uh, mm -hmm. yes, yes, sir. I, I am already uh, in I already started that process. The problem is is the uh, the lack of funds. Um, they have well, and that's and, very common. People would move if they had a place to move to, but they well, say you're not paying any rent and the lease is up. So whether you have money or don't, that isn't a defense. So we'll discuss it further when they're here. I don't want to talk about it with without both sides being here, but I will see you next Monday, June 28th at 2.35. It's going to be a very busy afternoon. All right, Mr. Lugier, and be sure to log in right on time. I will be logged in early, sir. All right, and if, if you can't log in, just come to the courthouse, and I'll put you in a conference room, and I can deal with you from there. Okay. Oh, that would be uh, that would be awesome. Uh, I All right. So to... just otherwise, just come to the courthouse. Yes. All sir. right. I'll see. Either way, I'll see you next week. Folks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, we need to let the clock tick for just a moment here. Okay. Monday is our civil day. We do a lot of general civil in the morning. We do landlord tenant and then at 145 we break for some general civil matters, which is what we have here. So I just finished. We're actually right on time, which is somewhat unusual. It is now 145. This is file 21360GC. It's entitled Citizens Bank versus Joan Wilcox. Ms. Jennifer Dillo is here, and I appreciate you putting your P number in there. Six nine eight five five. The defendant is not here. Uh, often people log in late. Uh, the last case I just finished, the guy logged in about 18 minutes after we'd finished his case. But let's discuss this case. This is a an action for money damages. The complaint is seeking 5586.06 plus fees and interest uh, for a total judgment of $5,900 plus 15 cents plus other fees. Uh, the complaint was filed uh, last March and the defendant filed an answer, uh, a capable answer. It looks like maybe she got a template for it or something, but she filed what we generally refer to as a general denial of all of the elements of the complaint, stated a few affirmative defenses, and filed that in a timely manner. That answer gets you past a default. Once you're sued, you have to respond or you automatically lose by default. Sorry, Judge. Ms. Wilcox did call. She said she'd attend, but she wasn't sure how to do Zoom, just so you know. Well, she isn't here now. Um, is she here in the building? No. I told her how to do Zoom, and she, she said, I'll try. All right. Um, uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, the clerks indicated that the defendant did call in. People are struggling with Zoom. 
I'm sure Zoom has been a boon to your practice. Um, I was talking with my old law school roommate, and he does a lot of civil work all over the state, and it's changed the way people practice. You didn't have to drive out here to Centerville uh, from Troy or hire local counsel to come do it. You're able to just zoom in here from your office and take care of it. So my sense of it is even when we open the courtrooms back up, we will continue to do things like this by Zoom. The downside is it's a struggle for many people. And I guess the hybrid would be then they just come into the courthouse. We would have the defendant here and then you would be present by Zoom. But I assume you put a lot less miles on your car in the last year or so than in the year, previous years. So I don't know, we're spinning our wheels here. We're waiting to see whether she shows up or not. Uh, to call in and say, well, I'm gonna try to come isn't a good answer. Let me see if I have a telephone number for her. That doesn't appear in the pleading. Oh, here it is. Let me see if I can just call her up. Good afternoon. Is this Joan Wilcox? Yes. This is Judge Middleton. My clerk advised you're having trouble connecting by a Zoom. Is it okay if we just do this by telephone? It's fine. That's not ideal, but we'll make the best of it. Ms. Wilcox, Jennifer Dillow from uh, Weltman Weinberg is here on behalf of Citizens Bank. They claim that you owe $5,900 plus cost, interest, and attorney fees. They filed that lawsuit in March of 2021. You filed a response in April of 2021 with a general denial of all the elements of the offense. And I just started to explain on the record that a general denial does get you past the default judgment, um, but that does not necessarily get you past the next stage, which is what this is, a motion for summary disposition. Uh, the plaintiff had served a copy of the motion for summary disposition on you, and they filed a supplement today with uh, their interrogatories. The general denial just says, I deny the complaint, and we go to the next step of the proceedings. Their motion for summary disposition states that essentially there's no material issue of fact and you have stated no defense. Uh, summary disposition is used by attorneys in the civil arena and judges all the time. Lay people are not familiar with it. But essentially it just states it is what it is. Uh, you had a credit card, you failed to pay, there's an agreement, you haven't stated any defense, and we are entitled to a judgment on our behalf. And uh, Ms. Dillo, is that your position? Uh, yes, Your Honor. No, I, I agree. I wasn't, I was talking to the attorney. All right, that is their position. Ms. Wilcox, what's your position? My position is that I have no money. I got the credit card, yes, and I used it for medical insurance and uh, taxes. And before the payment come due, I lost my part-time job. Uh, I've talked to somebody from Citizens a couple different times, and they usually get ornery and hang up on me. Uh, well, Ms. Wilcox, the fact that you don't have any money is not a defense to the fact that you owe the money. And uh, 
if you don't have any money, you don't have any money. They may not be able to collect on this debt, but it doesn't mean that you don't owe the debt. Apparently you used it for health insurance and taxes, which is fine, but then they didn't get paid. Now, the order I have, Ms. Dillo, simply states judgment of $5,915. It isn't broken down any further into costs. You simply want me to execute that order? Um, yes, Your Honor, that is the amount sued in the complaint. Plaintiff is um, not asking this court to award it. It's for us in this matter. credit card was for $5,000. I didn't charge uh, more than $5,000 on it. And well, it was, uh, yeah, but what happens is that it accrues late fees and interest, which takes it over that. There was no interest for 18 months. Well, there is interest here, and they've given you the breakdown of the costs and the filing and the supplemental. Now, if you don't have this money, they can't collect it but you haven't stated a defense and there does not appear to be any material issue of fact. Um, even though you used it for, I guess, arguably good purposes, uh, you use their money and they want you to pay it back. So I make a finding that you owe $5,900.15. Are you still at the Grant Avenue address? I am. All right. I'll sign all three of these. Someone from Welp and Weinberg will be getting a hold of you. She put her telephone number on her pleadings, which was very helpful, so I could call you and we could conduct this hearing. Well, I'm sorry, but I couldn't get it to connect. I couldn't get Zoom to connect. Well, we managed to do what we needed to do. As I was mentioning before I called you that people some people are very good at it and some people struggle with it. Um, soon enough, we'll be opening the courthouse up and people will be able to come here to do their business like I've done for previous 41 years of my career. Um, regrettably, you owe this money, whether you have the ability to pay it or not is another matter. They cannot garnish any social security or take uh, those sources of income, but you have other sources of income. You win the lottery, your grandma leaves you a million dollars, uh, something circumstances change they can collect. But I made a finding that there is no material issue of fact. You have not stated a defense. So the fact that you don't have any money is not a defense to the fact that you owe money. They did not ask for costs, which is better than nothing. That saved probably Two hundred and fifty or three hundred dollars. All right, Miss Wilcox, do you have any questions? Um, no, I, I don't. I guess. All right, you'll get that in the mail, and Weltman and Weinberg will be contacting you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Well, we managed to accomplish that. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good day. All right, I'll sign those and they'll be sent back and you can do what happens next. Okay, thank you. Right. Thank you. All right, our next matter is another tenancy at two o'clock. So I'll let the clock tick a little bit. Uh, we have one more landlord tenant matter, and then we have several small claims matters starting at three o'clock. So we will take a break in between there. Tenants are struggling to find a place to move to.
neither party is logging in for our next case, which leads me to believe that it may have been resolved. We'll sit here for a few minutes and let the clock go, but I'm surprised that no one is here. Good afternoon, Mary. Uh, Hi. Thank you for coming back. Uh, Mr. Gump is not here yet. I'm going to put you in the way. Are you still there at the address? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put you in the waiting room for just a moment while I wait for him. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon. We're a little behind. All right. My apologies. So was I. Well, yeah, we're because we're waiting for you. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But we're all here, so that's good. All right. Uh, Miss Lindsay is here. We're ready to return to the matter of Block 14, Inc. versus Mary Lindsay. Mr. Jeremy Gump is here on behalf of Block 14. Mary is also present. Uh, just before we brought you in, she indicated she was still in the premises. 
This is a termination of tenancy action. The, the lease expired in April, I believe. Uh, defendant is still there. She indicated at our last hearing she's been trying to move since December 20th, uh, but has not been successful at that. Um, Mr. Gump, is your position, you're still asking for possession of the property back? Yes, Your Honor. Mary, what's your position here? Um, I mean, pretty much the same. I'm just still trying to find uh, some place to move to. Um, so I guess if I have to move out sooner, then I'll just have to, you know, do what I can do. Well, the law says you have 10 days from today to move. Today is the 21st. That would give you until July 1st um, to move. And uh, I've had a lot of these lately where there, there aren't alleging violation of the lease. The lease is just up and the landlord wants the property back. I had several cases where the landlord actually wants to sell the property. And like you, it's difficult for the tenants to find another place to move to. And I know from other reasons, you've been trying to find a place to go for the last six months. Uh, but they're entitled to the relief they're asking for. Sometimes what comes is a drop dead date, and that date is July 1st. All right. No money judgment is entered at this time. You have until July 1st to appeal this. Now, Ms. Lindsay, let me tell you something. Mr. Gump knows this. But uh, in a landlord-tenant matter, uh, the law rules generally that you have 10 days from the date of the hearing to move or appeal or you're subject to being evicted. That's where they come get a writ of eviction and sheriff puts your stuff out on the street. However, they don't have to evict you on the 10th day. They have 56 days from the day to ask for the writ of eviction. So they do have some flexibility, but the discretion is completely theirs. Um, I know of a couple of cases where the landlord wants the person out on the very first possible day. But if you come back and say, well, I've got a place to move to, but I can't move to July 6th. Well, it might make more sense to just wait until July 6th than to go through all the rigmarole of an eviction on July 1st. But, um, the clock is ticking. You have 10 more days to move or you're subject to being evicted. Uh, do you have any questions? I don't think so. All right, you know how to contact the landlord and Mr. Gump's office is right there on John Street. Um, Mr. Gump, anything further? Uh, no, Your Honor, I, I, I think if it's helpful to Ms. Lindsay, you know, even if we were to get the writ on July 1st, I think it being the holiday weekend there, I think it'd be unlikely to have it served and executed before July 5th or July 6th. So that was something we were discussing as well, just to at least have another weekend in there for her to have an opportunity to move. That's There's probably some truth in that. We are open July 1st and 2nd. Uh, I have a very full day on July 2nd. Probably a lot of lawyers wanted to get out of town. I've dragged them in here, but uh, uh, we'll be here. Um, all right, Mary, you should continue to make efforts to relocate, uh, contact your landlord with anything further. Also, when you do move, recall you need to turn in your keys and give your forwarding address in writing within four days of your moving. Uh, okay. All right, you're good to go, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Gump, thank you. That finishes the landlord tenant portion. Next up is small claims. See you again. All right, I think I'll go ahead and stop the live feed.